letting them go. Ever. <laughs> Jack? Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am Espoir David, and today I'm going to continue playing a little bit more of Something's Wrong with Sunny Day Jack. As I've said in the other videos, and as I'm gonna continue to say, this is an adult game. This is meant for adults, this has adult situations, this is not for minors to play. But I do censor pretty much everything in my videos, so there's that at least. But this is not a game for minors. This is an adult game. So, uh, I unlocked something called Afterlife. I haven't clicked it yet, so let's find out what that is. Ugh. May 25th, 2000 and blech. I was on box number 15, and thank god I was, because I was just about to lose all hope. The move had been spotty, yes. Somewhere, in our youthful naivety, Ian and I had decided it was no longer necessary to each own a separate car. Oh, so is this about Ian? It'll save us on gas, we said. It'll be our shared baby, we said. It'll mean less insurance bills, we said. Uh oh, I don't like where this is going. But when push came to shove, and we needed this car to pull through now more than ever, it didn't have enough trunk space to fit even half of Ian's things in it. Fast forward five trips to and from the college, boxing up my things and driving them to our new apartment, and then doing the same for all of his. Ooh. That was horrible, and we both agreed to never do it ever again. But fifteen boxes in to unpacking all that, the driving back and forth was beginning to feel like the easy part. It stank, like... I could feel a musk-like aura around me. Oh, I stank. I am the stanky. I was so sweaty I was having flashbacks to the day my fifth grade PE teacher had to take me aside and teach me what deodorant was. My knees were sore and my legs were numb. The carpet had taken to imprinting its woven texture into my flesh. I'd been down there for so long. I honestly probably could have really used a break and a shower. But having everything in such disarray was keeping me from being able to relax. Bubble wrap and tape, boxes torn into pieces or kicked in for funsies. And somewhere in this mess there was a box cutter on the floor, but I had no idea where it was at this point, so that was just going to have to be a fun surprise to find later. <laughs> Didn't, wasn't there a similar thing about a box cutter? I didn't think it was this possible to be so tired and so sickly and stuffy and ready to explode. I needed some breathing room. I needed just a little space. Hey! Pizza's here! Oh, Ian. I can't wait to dump you. Oh, thank God! He's alright. I guess. He's no Jack. Or Sean. I don't think I'd ever been so quick in my life standing up. If I'd moved like that in high school, I definitely would have made track for sure. Yes. Yes! Oh god, it's about time! Easy now. It's still hot. Because who has two thumbs and got there just in time for them to run out? So then they had to go make an entirely new fresh one just for him! <laughs> Aww. This guy! <laughs> Aww. <laughs> yeah, right. So, seriously, be careful. The cheese is really hot. Plates are in the bag. Ian sets down a big box of pizza that's already grease-soaked enough to feel like the heavy disc of cheese and sauce inside will fall through the bottom at any second. F yes, I was about to literally eat my shirt. <laughs> I open the box, and a wave of heat and cheese smell floods outwards. It's golden and glorious. Don't you think we're, like, a bit old to be eating cheese pizza still? You're never too old for eating cheese pizzas, Ian! What are you saying? What is this blasphemy, sir? Ian grabs a slice after I do, and we both begin the race to see who can down the most molten grease the fastest. I feel like... Maybe we should be past this phase. What about trying a combination pizza next time? 
Okay, but with all those toppings on top, you don't get the baked cheese. Top. Oh yeah, I guess so. Right. Right. Almost as if to demonstrate my point about the superiority of cheese pizza, he takes a long, stringy bite that stretches what looks like to be half a foot long. And it's in that moment that I can't help but think, there's really no place I'd rather be. Growing up, there weren't too many options for best friends. For one reason or another, the flighty and unfocused minds of toddlers who'd shown up to Mrs. Grimgam's first grade class didn't seem too interested in developing deep, meaningful friendships. The only one who seemed to want a friend was the kid who never seemed to have any. Aww. That was Ian. Ian wasn't particularly loud, and he didn't have cool clothes or toys. He just kind of faded into the background. A lot of kids make fun of him. But in the end, that only made him an even better friend once I got to know him. He was a nerd, and he was silly, and he was very apologetically himself. But what we had was special. And it still is. For now, I guess. <laughs> Here we are, years and years down the line, getting an apartment together, going to college together. I could spend the rest of my life like this. Are you alright? Pete's too good! I snap out of my blissful trance. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I'm alright. You're <laughs> totally spacing on me. Is, is everything okay? I was just thinking about the bright and glorious future that we're obviously going to have together, Ian. Of course, of course. No, I was just thinking about how nice this is all going to be. You really think so? I know so. You aren't regretting this. I, I don't know if it's just me, but I, I wasn't expecting that. Aww. What a pushover. If you change your mind later, I won't be upset. But I, I, I really hope that this isn't uh, too weird. Oh. Why would it be weird? We're a thing, right? Like a couple? I've known you since you were still wetting the bed. H hey, that's not even fair. You know, I just have a really small bladder. <laughs> My point is, nothing you could do would be weird, and I'm hoping nothing I could do would be weird either. Ian pauses and gives a downcast glance at the floor. Well, it, isn't it sinful? Oh, sweet baby. Sinful? Why would this be sinful? I... I just worry, okay? Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm being... paranoid. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, If you're trying to make me hate Ian less, it's working. Ian. His face doesn't just fall. It falls through the floor. My mom called me. Oh. Someone gave her our address. Or... She might have had one of her friends watching. I don't know. Jeez. She, she said. She says that to live with someone out of wedlock, it, it's a sin. And I'm going to hell. Oh, don't don't tell your son that. She said I'm only doing it to to satisfy. My manhood. Jeez. Uh, uh, I'm not taking advantage of you by doing this, am I? No. Oh. Normally, under any other circumstances, I'd tell someone what they wanted to hear. But I know Ian. So I cut out the middleman and just hold him. I hold on to him tight, like he's going to run away or melt or fall if I don't. Oh, He holds me back after a while. Promise me that. that. That you want this too? I know she's just being mean, but... I love you. 
Oh, I just need to hear you say it. It's very much what Jack said. I love you, Ian. And if I didn't love you, I wouldn't be here. He clings to me even more. Ian has a bit of a cry. But after that, we block his mother's phone number and move on. Huh? We have as much pizza as we can stomach. But after a while, the delicious, savior-like qualities of the pizza turn into dairy overload and we call it quits. Ooh, give me milk. Alright, so we've done most of the unpacking out here and that's just about it, right? Should we? Although, I did find one other box of yours mixed in. Another one? Huh. I don't remember having any others. My room is pretty much set up now and nothing seems missing. Uh-oh. Where's this going? Hmm. Well, it was in your dorm, so it's gotta be yours. I bring Ian to a small box sitting among the refuse and remains of my unpacking spree. Kneeling down, Ian pulled the strip of tape sealing the box shut away and opened it up. Oh! Uh, right! Okay. I know what this is. <laughs> oh no. This is Momanga. Damn. And I just got my shelves all situated, too. <laughs> <laughs> I see, you are a person of culture. Ian flips through a few of them. They're a mix of matte covers with doggy-eared corners and glossy, almost laminated covers that look brand new. It'll be nice to put all these out in the open. No more hiding. Oh. My little... victory dance, you know? This is our home. Nobody can tell us what to do anymore. Oh, how old are these guys? He was right. He had to keep that stuff with me or read it in the library before. Dirty picture books, his mom called them. But now, he was finally free to enjoy all that stuff. Ian placed the books back into the box and closed it up again. Come on. Let's go christen my room with these bad boys. Or, or girls. Girls? <laughs> oh, what a weenie. What an adorable weenie. Why is this called afterlife? I stifle a chuckle as Ian heaves and hoes the box upwards, and we make a single file line to trek to his room. Person of culture. Wait. Is that Undertale over there? I do believe that is Undertale over there. That kind of looks like Omori down there. I can't tell the other two, though. Ian sets the box down on his bed and begins unloading it in brick-like stacks. Austere Challenger Tribulation is an A, so that'll be easy. Solution of the Reckless is on a pretty full shelf, though. Th that's the S's. So, uh, I'll have to move the entire shelf one down. Ugh, collector problems, am I right? Uh... He thoughtfully studied his bookshelf with the intensity of an archaeologist studying hieroglyphics. I sit there and look at the pretty pictures on the books. There's a few nice ones, and a few that I'm not too interested in. A lot of these date so far back, I'm getting flashbacks. Glomping. Yowie paddles. Those cookie sticks that you bought because they were cute to take pics with even though they weren't all that satisfying. Ah, the ancient, the, the sacred, I don't even know if you'd call them memes at this point. I have to stop myself from visibly cringing when one of those books mentioned those felt cat ear hats that everyone in school had to have at some point. Did I ever have those? I probably did. I continue to pick through as he carefully splices each edition into his collection. Huh? A honey trumpet. Honey trumpet. It... I fish out a book featuring a tall, handsome boy with glasses. He's not muscle-bound, and he's kind of a beanpole, but from my experience that's what constitutes unattractive in these. He's holding on to what I can only assume is a blushing love interest in tight clothing. I jump right into the middle of the- Oh wow! It's one of those books! Hey, you're alright? Yeah, I'm fine. I know, I know. It's, it's real- mixed bag. I just kind of grabbed what I could. They're sentimental to me. Except that one. <laughs> like, not that one. <laughs> Before I knew it, the book is gone. 
Ian is clutching the book in his arms, looking red as a tomato. Is... is that... pornography? It's... it's... it's not porn! It's called hentai, and it's art. Technically, it's etchy, and... and you weren't supposed to see that. How old are these guys? They're going to college. They're at least out of high school by this point. Just etchy. Shit. This is what I was talking about. I, 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 I didn't mean to make it weird. I promise. No. He's such a little it's nerd. It's just something I picked up on the side. That's all. It's... Oh, you do not have to explain your manga to me. You have. You do have to explain why you cheated on me, though. In, in the future. Can you explain that? At this point, I can't help but peer into the box again. Scantily clad characters sit in provocative poses, cover to cover. There's not much left in there at this point. And that's at least a dozen. It's art. Say, that's a lot of- Oh, come on. I just told you. It's not porn. It's hentai, and it's art. There's almost a cracked his voice reminiscent of days past. <laughs> oh. Ian grabs the box off the bed and shoves the book in it promptly. Th 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 these are mostly doujinshi. Fan comics. You get them because you like the main series, and that's it. Yeah, doujinshi. He looks at me, almost offended. It's definitely porn. Alright, so if it's not porn, can I see more? I was still looking at those. What? No! I'm shelving these uh and you can read them later. Once they're on the shelf. When I'm done. Aww. How do I know you aren't going to put them under your bed or something? It's not porn! Why would I put them under my bed? <laughs> Get off my case, Mom! What are you, my mom? Aww, he's all puffed up. Uh, wait, wait. What do you mean, under my bed? What are you doing under my bed? Ah, that's my cue to leave. Hey! <laughs> don't just run away! Uh, uh, c come on! Don't be a jerk! No. Mm. I flee the scene of the crime, giggling like I'm a kid again. I'm being serious! You're not going under my bed, are you? <laughs> uh, that's a violation of my privacy! You don't know what I keep down there! Aw, oh, there's probably like a billion pictures of me or something. How do I tell him I was bluffing? I run into my room and immediately go to hide. The last place he'd look would be behind the door, so I make the hardest U-turn of my life and pull the door over me as possible. Ian follows after, but doesn't seem to pay any mind to me from my advantageous position. I may just be safe yet. <laughs> Gotcha! Oh no! I am got! Ian bulldozes me, coming in like a freight train and plowing the two of us directly onto the bed. A giggling, laughing, flailing mess of people. I try and push him off. I try to get my own leverage. I think he tries to choke hold, but I lick a, <laughs> I lick a long wet stripe down his arm. <laughs> Lilo and Stitch style. Ah! Gross! He sits back on the bed and dries his arm on the blankets on his lap. What are you, f five? <laughs> I only blow a raspberry at him, and the two of us collapse in laughter. Chests heaving from the exchange, I let my hand find his and hold it gingerly. FYI, I've never been under your bed. I just know that that's the cliché porn mag hiding spot for guys who still buy paper porn. <laughs> who st Still not porn, but... I prefer to support the creators. Making comics is hard, and I'm a connoisseur of the arts, I'll have you know. We both laugh again. He seems less upset about it all now. We lay in silence, staring at the ceiling for a sweet and calm moment. So, for real, are we gonna talk about this? What's there to talk about? Part of me wonders if he's genuinely upset, but another half of me feels like he may have really been hiding things from me. And if it's something like sexy maids and cat people, I can handle that. But if he feels like he needs to hide things from me, I don't want him to have to live like that. 
Yeah, it sounds like his mother is kind of a creep already. Look, I don't care what you do with your free time. So, as long as you're not seeing anyone else or something... Right? You know I'd never do that. Are you sure about that? I know, I'm talking about whatever kind of stuff you like. You don't have to hide it. He shifts uncomfortably next to me on the bed. I squeeze his hand. I know. Deep down, I know. Do ya? Can I be honest? He fidgets more. That stuff. It's... It's really not what you think it's for. Is it for practicing? It sounds cliche as hell, but... I seriously read it just for the stories. <laughs> I read I read it for the story. Well, yeah. Some of it has really good stories. You're the only person I can see like that. Just you. Other people are weird, and I, I don't know them. But I love you, and I love doing <laughs> things with you. What sort of things? Like Monopoly? I feel safe with you. And I know you think this is silly. But I want to be able to make you feel as good as those guys in the books. Aww. I only think about you. I mean, that is pretty cute that he uh, calls over and over to make sure that the player character is okay. He blushes and fidgets with his hands. He really is just such a squirrely bundle of nervousness. I wrap him in my arms and nuzzle into his torso. I could hear his sharp inhale afterwards, and I felt the relaxing of his body as he slowly got comfortable in the embrace. I felt him melt into me. It's not like this is the first time I've done this with him. Growing up, we got used to holding each other, letting each other ride out the worst of whatever they were feeling. It was almost cute how he still needed me like this, but I'd also be lying if I said that I wasn't fond of this myself. You okay? Yeah, I, I think I am. He shifts his weight, pressing against me. It's cozy against him, and I'd be content to stay like this forever. You had to cut out all of that, just all of that. <clears throat> his gentle, albeit panicked voice was calming. I reassured him with a smile while he cupped my face in his hands. Hey, it's okay. I'm fine. Ian helps me clean up after. There's really not much of a mess, but he fusses about what he can. He seems much less tense than before. I didn't need to wonder why. No. I'm sorry. I, I wasn't too rough with you, was I? Not really. I didn't mind it. <laughs> That's good then. I pat the bed, and Ian follows like a puppy, snuggling up with me beneath the covers. He's shy about a lot of things, but affection isn't one of them at the moment. You know, the only person I want is you. Don't you? Oh. He kisses my forehead, gently, before nestling in for what will probably turn out to be a nap for the both of us. Oh, a nap sounds really nice. Just you and me. Forever. Uh-huh. You're the second- you're the second dude to say forever to me. Well, I guess technically he'd be the first since this is before Jack. Also, he's got like a little half-heart thing and I'm, I just assume I'm wearing the other half. Right. Forever. I couldn't be happier. Mm. Mm. Okay. Hmm, what's audio tracks? Hmm? Oh! Uh... Uh? Hey! It's me again. I'm... sorry. I know I shouldn't keep calling. You're probably busy or something. <laughs> it's... probably... Really dumb of me to try and reach you at this point. 
Feel free to let me know if you want me to leave you alone, and I will. Just figured... You haven't said to stop. Maybe you're still listening. It'd be nice if you were. I really fucked things up, I know that. But I still care about you a lot. I want to make this work. I really, really don't want this to be what ruins everything. I just keep thinking, right? You remember when we went to that shitty Valentine's Day dance in school? God, we must have been like... 15? I didn't think I'd ever get asked anything ever, and you changed all that. And then I just realized... I don't know how not to have you in my life. You're the only one that makes anything meaningful. Nobody's meant anything since. I need Aww. you. Alright. Alright, enough. I think you care about them, don't you? You've convinced yourself that they need saving. That you can save them. It's too late, you know. They're already gone. Where I am, you could never reach. And every day that piece of me grows bigger and stronger. It's only a matter of time until we're one, truly and forever. I love them. And they love me. I'm not letting them go. Ever. <laughs> Jack? So Hi there, Mr. Uh, Mr. Haberday. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Mr. Haberday, so nice to meet you. My name is Joseph, Joseph Kinley. I'm sure the director's told you a bit about me beforehand, but I'm the psych and development consultant for the show. Uh, well, they, they might have. Um, I don't really know that much about production. Uh, I just try and stay out of the way when I can. And that's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. They don't pay you to fuss over those details, I imagine. <laughs> if only, right? <laughs> So, my job here is to help the writers make sure that, um, that we're sending the right messages out there. I make sure that the words you act out are mentally and psychologically nourishing for the children watching at home. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, you have a very important job as the face of our program. You're the candy coating for the broccoli of information that we're feeding them every day. You're comforting, you're kind, you're caring. They have to trust you and like you. Tell me, Mr. Haberday, um, have you ever considered having a child of your own? Um, well, well, I, I guess, uh, maybe, someday, <laughs> if I can afford one. Yeah, probably, yeah. Someday, you might have your own, but the job you're going to be taking, the role you'll be playing, will be significant in the raising of children all over the nation. You're going to be their parent when their parents are away, their babysitter when their parents are busy. You're going to be their friend, their counselor, their brother, or maybe even their dad when they don't necessarily have one. Shit, I, I don't know if I can do all that. What, what if I mess up? That's why I'm here to help you. We're going to be putting you through a few psychology classes, some basic child care and handling classes. The whole works, really. Uh, do, do you like children? Of course, but uh, I know that... Uh, I, I mean, I, I, just, I don't want them to, you know... Uh, I don't want to put them in a bad position, or... Judging by your, um, are, are those tattoos? E yeah, um, I, I can cover them up. Makeup told me that it was fine, though. They, they said it wouldn't be an issue. I was in high school, I didn't know any... I'm willing to bet that you had a very hard life growing up. For someone so young to be so defined in themselves and to lash out like that, making permanent adjustments to their bodies in order to stand out, you wanted attention, didn't you? You wanted to be seen and heard and felt and loved. I, I'm not here to judge. I might even be wrong. Um, but I want you to really think about why you want what's best for these children. That's going to be our starting point moving forward. You're going to be wiping a lot of faces, holding little hands, and giving lots of hugs over the next coming years. With any luck, of course. <laughs> uh, by the time we're finished, you're going to be better at it than most mothers in America. Got it, got it, got it. Um, but... How do you know I'll do it right? 
You want to know the truth? It's all in the psychology, Mr. Aberdeen. The child's mind isn't that hard a puzzle to figure out. Think of it like a, like a secret code. It might seem like nonsense, but when you look at it in the right light, it all comes together and tells you everything that you need to know. If you love the kids enough, we'll take care of the rest. Just keep that motivation and the enthusiasm sincere. We can teach you how to de-escalate situations and teach you how to navigate them, but children aren't stupid, Mr. Aberdeen. They can tell when you're faking it. I'm sure you especially understand what it's like to say... Have a parent or guardian tell you that they love you, right? But maybe even as young as, say, six, you could tell that they didn't really mean what they were saying. Oh, I was enjoying that. Okay. Well, that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Well, uh, for right now, I'm going to end the video here. Thank you so much for watching. This was Something's Wrong with Sunday Day Jack, one of my favorite games to play on this channel so far. If you'd like to try it for yourself, since I need to cut out uh, large chunks of what's happening because this is an adult game, feel free to play it yourself. Have a great night, take care of yourself, and remember, there's always hope.